So now it's a good time to get a closer look at a specific layer, the data link layer. In this video we'll shortly remind ourselves of its goals and then start talking about framing. So what is the second layer responsible for? As we've mentioned in previous videos, it is responsible for transmitting data between two hosts that are directly linked. Let's view our network diagram again. Consider the connection here between computer A and router 1. The second layer is responsible for this connection. The same applies for each connection between two directly linked devices. As we've said before, each link may be implemented differently. So the link here may use Wi-Fi, while the one here will use a human sender. The third layer is responsible for defining the route, that the message sent from computer A to computer B will go through routers 1, 2, 5, 8, and 10, and not in another way. In order to send data between two directly linked devices, the data link splits the data into chunks called frames and handles each frame separately. Wait, but why? Why would the data link split the data into frames? Well, there are many different answers to that question. We'll mention just a few of them. First, for reliability. If one frame is damaged, we won't lose all the data. Consider downloading a DVD video file from the web, 4.7 gigabytes in a single frame. Consider that while transmitting over the internet, one bit changed from one to zero. Now there is an error in the file. We might need to download it all over again. Yet, if we use many frames, each frame can be individually validated. In case one frame is invalid, we can ask for that frame again and for that frame only. In addition, validation of the data becomes much easier in smaller chunks. We'll learn how this is done soon enough, but for now it is enough to say that it is easier to validate that a small frame is valid than it is to validate a large frame. Another reason would be starvation. When having a channel shared by multiple devices, only one can send data at a single time. Think of a room full of people. If more than one person speaks at the same time, it is hard to understand what is being said. If a single device transmits data without stopping, other devices cannot transmit their data. This is called starvation. Breaking data into frames helps prevent starvation from happening. After each frame, other devices might take their turn and transmit data. As mentioned before, there are many more reasons for framing, but I hope I've been able to convince you that splitting data into smaller chunks is a good idea. On the next video, we'll see how this may be actually achieved.